for the mainstream of American society, uh, mass incarceration is largely invisible. Um, if uh, you are white and college educated, for example, uh, incarceration rates have not increased at all, hardly. Um, and so for that segment uh, uh, of American society, uh, m mass incarceration means nothing at all. In minority communities, uh, particularly among uh, African Americans, if they live in poor neighbourhoods, if they have very low levels of schooling, if they dropped out of high school, it's been an utter transformation uh, of the lives of uh, those very marginal, uh, very marginal people. The criminal justice system has become a ubiquitous presence uh, in their lives. The face of government uh, in the lives of those. Uh, uh, poor African uh, American, particularly men with low levels of schooling, the face of government uh, has become the prison guard, the parole officer, the policeman. Uh, and so uh, for that segment uh, of American society, it's been uh, an utter transformation. The social experience of American society among blacks as a consequence of the prison boom, has become profoundly different from the social experience of American society uh, among whites. Uh, uh, among blacks, even college educated blacks, they know people in prison, they have family members uh, in prison. Uh, the difficulties associated with life after you have a prison record, that forms a much greater part of the day-to-day -day experience of African Americans. And for white society, I think, you know, that's uh, largely an unknown problem. At root, uh, what these men need is not more intensive supervision coming out of prison, uh, but they need sources of structure and order and pr predictability uh, in their lives that have a strong pro-social basis. So what are we talking about? Essentially, uh, employment. And uh, so uh, in a Brookings paper uh, I wrote, uh, uh, I looked at uh, the cost and the effects of giving every parolee in the United States uh, who comes out of prison, who is in need of work, give every one of those guys a job. And uh, what, would be, what would be the cost of that? Uh, and uh, what would be the consequences of that for correctional costs, uh, uh, consequences for the costs of crime and so on. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's the idea I've been doing uh, a lot of work on uh, over the last few years. I think uh, employment is the fundamental deficit, actually, uh, of this group of men. And so that's really what uh, uh, policy has to target. The prison and jail population in the US is five times larger per capita uh, than, uh, uh, than Australia. Uh, Australia has uh, a very, very large racial disparity in incarceration uh, that really is the mirror image of the racial disparity in incarceration that we see in the United States. In the United States, uh, the ratio of black incarceration to white incarceration is about seven or eight to one. So blacks are about seven or eight times more likely to be in prison or jail uh, than whites. Uh, in, uh, uh, in Australia, uh, the, the black-white ratio, if you like, or the ratio between uh, the indigenous population uh, and uh, white Australians is uh, uh, also about seven or eight to one. Though these incarceration rates are, uh, are much lower, uh, are much lower here. And I, my sense is uh, Australia has not gone nearly as far, actually, down the path of punitive criminal justice uh, as the United States has. And in, in the United States, uh, it's a surrogate social policy for low-income men.